The MGs, they are open. I just listened to a couple of songs that I always reference all the time that I feel like I know really well. Well, for the first time, I noticed all these crazy vocal effects floating around in the background that I never noticed out of the hundreds and hundreds of times I've heard this song. And I was like, what the, first of all, I was like, what are they doing? That's really cool. But secondly, I was like, why am I just hearing this for the first time? The hardest thing as an engineer is when you're struggling sonically to figure out a puzzle a sonic puzzle that's going on with a song. All these variables add up to some weird sonic mesh and you're trying to break that apart and make it so you can hear the vocal, you can hear the drums, you can hear the guitar one, guitar two, you can understand the bass, you can hear the piano. So having tools like your favorite pair of speakers or your really good detailed pair of headphones to help you solve that puzzle for me, headphones are a big key. I like to put the headphones on to, well, is my bass really what is it doing? Is it really the track really as bright as I think it should be or should it be brighter? Some control rooms are, they're, they're weird. They're a little weird. They take adjustment to get used to. At least my headphones, I know what they sound like. So I know if I put them on and it sounds dark and dull, oh, okay, well, whatever I'm recording is pretty dark. So do I change it or just leave it alone? The newest Foo Fighters record, Medicine at Midnight, we tracked it in the house. And the control room was a bedroom. And we put no isolation in it. We put no treatment on the walls. There was a couch, a desk, a bunch of speakers, a loud volume knob, and a bunch of mic preamps. And there were times when I'm doing rough mixes and the room was a square room with a tiled wall down the hallway. And it was just, a freak of nature of how bad it sounded. So when I was doing roughs, I would put my headphones on so I knew what, what I was listening to. Otherwise, the, the room was just telling me lies, 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 lies. So that's how I worked on that record in particular. Either I'm doing a rough mix or if I'm doing some editing or vocal editing or vocal tuning, anything like that, I can trust the headphones. The low end is beautiful, very responsive, tight, Last but not least, man, the upper mid is, feels like it's in a really good spot and it feels like it's very, very trustworthy. With the open back, it works better sonically. It's that little bit of extra air that's coming in and out of the headphones during an open back helps things translate easier. I do notice the imaging is really wide. That was the one thing I noticed right away was they do sound wider, right? which is how the heck do you make that happen? They get just as loud, and trust me, sometimes I mix way too loud, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> People are like, dude, put on these $20,000 headphones. And I'm like, okay. And it's literally like putting a brick, two bricks with a wire strap on your head. I did notice putting on the MGs for the first time, being very used to how the, the pros feel of like, oh, these feel a lot lighter and they a little softer on the head, dare I say. When I need a pair of headphones in a studio to really hear what's going on, it's a great tool to have.